Hi everyone, I wanted to show you some of the features of Krita, which is a brilliant digital drawing tool. You can download it from krita.org and the great thing about it is it's completely free. So often these art programs or drawing programs are really expensive, but this one is completely free and it's actually designed by artists for artists. So it's a community-based program um, to help artists to create really amazing artwork. So I'm going to show you a few of the features um, of how it works. I have only really just found out about it. So there's probably a lot of things on here that I don't know about or kind of could do more with. Um, so let me know through Teams or uh, as an email if you know of any really great features that I can show the rest of the class. But I'm just going to show you what I've found out so far and hopefully that will give you some tools to help you to develop your artwork. So the first thing that I do is I just open up a new uh, page. So I'm going to open up a new document and I like working A4, 300 ppi, so that's the resolution. If you go bigger than that, sometimes your computer can be a bit laggy unless you've got a really good computer. So I would just stick to 300 ppi and then create and then you will have a white sheet of paper in front of you. And then on the left hand side you have got lots of different tools that you can work with. Uh, as I said, I don't really know many of the features yet, but these are where they all are. So I think it's just a case of experimenting and trying things out. And then on the right side, you've got lots of different brushes and textures, and you've got your colour selector as well. So there's loads of things on there for you to work with. Now the way it's set up is a little bit like Photoshop, so if you've used Photoshop before, it will help you to understand how to use it. So I'm just going to show you kind of the basics really. So here I've got my colour selector so I can see I can go around the colour wheel this way um, and I can kind of select my colour and then I can go darker, lighter, you know, I'm going to start working with black just to give you simplicity really. Um, and here we've got all these different types of brushes. So if I go onto digital, I have got lots of different types of brushes here that I can use. Um, I'm just going to show you a few of them, so let's see what's going to be fun to try out. So here we've got our highlighter tool, okay, so that's kind of almost like um, one of those paint markers, those graffiti paint markers. And here you've got a slider where you can increase the size of your tool, so I'm going to work here, and then you can change your opacity as well. So, see here, yeah, so that's kind of one of those ones there. Then what I really like is if you go into paint, there are so many different types of paint brushes that you can work with. So here I'm going to be using, you know, I'll set very small, let's go bigger so you can see actually what that one's like. So you can see um, how it creates different types of marks. And as I'm moving with my brush, it is changing directions. You don't get that uniformity that sometimes you get with digital drawing. It changes and mixes things up as you work. So you can create really interesting textures. Okay, and let's see what else I've got here. You know, I've got like a dry brush, which we really like to use, you know, so you can see the difference there in texture. And I'm just building up layers. As I said, opacity, you can take that down. And you can get some really interesting, nice, different textures there. Now, one thing that I thought was quite firm were these really kind of exciting different types of spray paints that you can use. So here I've got these here, okay. And then I also really like the textures. In fact, they are my favourites. So I'm just going to let that finish doing that. As I said, it's much, much quicker when you're not doing a screen recording. Um, so, you know, here we've got um, things like this wooden effect. cool. Then I really liked the, um, I did a landscape as my example, which you'll see in the video next. Um, 
you can kind of use these stamps to create this is a mountain stamp and if I if I press it once it's like that but if I press it again it gets darker so you know you could create mountain landscapes um, I also really enjoy this kind of organic I'm going to change the color slightly so you can see as I build up here um, this kind of plant let me make that red this is going to be like the worst artwork you've ever seen, but I just think I want to show you all of the different techniques. But you can see how you can build up almost like these little foresty parts here. Um, and then I can go on to this one. See, so build up the size. But I mean, just really what I've been doing is just playing and just trying out different ways of working and different kind of techniques and different ways of using brushes. Um, and I've just found it's been really interesting to just see what everything can do first and so maybe do a sample piece first and then start doing an actual drawing of something. Um, you know, the way that you can layer things up is quite interesting because you could do skin tone, for example. You could kind of do shading with all of these different types of tools. So this is Krita. It's krita.org if you want to download it. Uh, it is completely free. Um, definitely have a go on it. There are other apps around um, and, and uh, programs that you can download which are really interesting, but I haven't tried them yet, but have a go and let me know if there's anything you've tried out that you really like and that you think is really interesting. Uh, because I think that it'd be great if we could all learn how to do all these digital drawing techniques um, a lot more um, to help us to have different media in our sketchbooks. So um, have a play on Krita. Uh, some things I haven't talked about is you can mask things off. Um, so you can use these here to, you know, if you wanted to kind of mask an area off, it works just like masking tape in the classroom at school. So if I do that and then I get an, a texture, for example, this one here, let's do a color that we haven't done yet. Um, I can use the brush tool and that will just kind of give it a solid edge. So just drawing this here, sketching this in. And you can see I can't go beyond the edge of my, um, my mask tool, my select tool, and then I can deselect it. So you'll see me do all of these things in the video. Um, but, you know, I only learned how to do it just by experimenting on a page like this and it took me uh, about 20 minutes to try different brushes out and then I did the artwork in about 25 minutes. Uh, it's not the best painting I've ever done, definitely, but it helped me to learn how to work with this tool. Uh, one tip when you're producing landscapes, which I know lots of the um, Year 9 students are working on at the moment, if you work from the back to the front, so as you're working into the foreground, you're adding more texture, you're adding more detail, you're adding more layers. Obviously, as things come closer to you, they end up being uh, bigger. So you just keep on working from the background to the foreground, and that's how you'll create depth in your artwork. Okay, so creator.org, have fun. Let me know if you need help, um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing all of your creations.